Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today I've got a very quick and easy project that is suitable for beginners. These are cutlery roll-up pouches. We've got a snap closure on the front. All it is is two pieces of fabric and a piece of stabiliser. Open that up, unroll it, and you've got a cutlery storage area inside here. So that'll hold your knife and fork and spoon. So come along, I'm going to show you how to make these really quick. I've actually made them for the shop as well, so I'll figure out how much I'm going to charge for them at the end. Let's get to it. All right, we don't need much at all for this project. I'm going to be using these little plastic snaps. If you don't have access to those, you can use the sewing snaps or even a small piece of Velcro. We have two pieces of fabric that are 12 inches square or 30 by 30 centimeters. And I've also got a piece of lightweight fusible palin or parlan that is also 30 centimeters square or 12 inches. It's just a really lightweight fusible. You can use an interfacing as well. This project doesn't need too much body in it. First thing we're going to do is fuse our palin to the back of our fabric. And here's one I've prepared earlier. So I've got the fusible on the back there and our fabric is ready. Set the backing aside for a moment. Flip your fabric around so that you've got the stabilizer faced up. From one corner to the next, we're going to mark a straight line. This center line here is going to be our cutting line. From there, on each side, we need to measure a quarter of an inch or six millimeters. Our seam allowance is only a quarter of an inch today. My ruler has quarter inch lines on it, so I'm going to line up that quarter inch mark with the line I've already drawn and mark another line to the right of the center. Then I'll flip this around and I'll mark another line to the right of the center. If you don't have one of these acrylic rulers with the guidelines on it, just grab any measuring gauge and you can mark quarter inch increments, then line up those marks with the straight edge of a ruler and just draw a straight line. Okay, so what we have now is our cutting line in the center and the two lines on either side are our stitching lines. If you're learning to do patchwork and you wanted to make half square triangles, this is exactly what you would do. You would place two pieces of fabric with the right sides facing and stitch on either side, cut down the center, and then you would have a half square triangle. But that's not what we're doing today. Take your back fabric. If this were printed, I'd have the printed side faced up because we'd want the two printed sides facing each other. All right, I've pinned this together really well. And because we're going to be sewing all the way around and across the center, you do need to make sure that you have this pinned securely. What I've also done here is marked a line on this side and on this side as well. This is going to be cut into two separate pieces. So we're making two separate pouches out of this one square. So we need to leave two openings. The first thing we're going to do is stitch right across the two outside lines here so the lines marked with a cross are our stitching lines once we've done those two rows then we can start from here with a back stitch so all the way to the corner come around finish here with a back stitch start again with a back stitch and go all the way around to the other side and finish here with a back stitch. Let's do that now. I'm using a regular number 90 or size 14 needle and I've reduced my stitch length to 2.6. Just the two outside lines for now. When you're sewing this, you wanna be careful not to actually pull because this is the bias of the fabric and the reason we're sewing this together all at once is to prevent our fabric from stretching out. So just guide the fabric through, try not to stretch it.
turn it around and we'll do the other side. Now we can sew up the outside square. I'll start on the side here where I want to leave an opening. Remember I'm doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Back stitch. Keeping a quarter of an inch seam, you can actually stitch all the way up to that center line and continue on. On this side I'm leaving another opening so I'll back stitch here, move on forward, back stitch here and continue on around. And then I'll back stitch where I've marked my opening. All right, we've sewn up the square all the way around, left an opening here and an opening here, and we've stitched up our diagonal lines across here. We can trim our corners. And then you can cut straight across the center. You can scissor cut that. If you've got a rotary cutter, you can cut it with that. straight down the center line. Before we turn this the right way out, let's give this a press. Now that we have two triangle pieces, the end points do need to be trimmed a little bit better than that. Let's find our opening and carefully turn this the right way out. And again, be careful not to stretch this long edge here. Remember this is the bias and it's the stretchiest part of the fabric. You'll poke out all your corners and once you've done that iron all the layers so that it sits nice and neatly. All right once you've ironed everything we've still got our opening on the side here to close up. We'll do that shortly. Before we fold our fabric we're going to go along and top stitch the two shorter edges. Let's go do that. For the top stitching I've increased my stitch length back to three. I'll start at the bottom of the bias edge here and come up and do the two side edges. All right the top stitching's done on both of the side edges here. Flip it over and along the bottom edge here, the longest edge, we're going to measure six inches or 15 centimeters from the point at the end. Same for this side. And then we're going to bring this outside point into that line we've marked. Clip it together and now we're going to sew down these two edges and along the bottom edge. Let's go and do that. When I get to this point here I'm going to go forward back and forward just to give it a little bit of extra support. stitch here and that's it. All right the last thing we need to do is measure up for the snaps and the best way to do that is to grab some cutlery, pop that inside your pouch flip this over and flip it over again And we want to bring this point over to the other side. 
we need to determine where the snap is going on this side of the pouch. So in here, I'll poke my awl through on this side. Bring that to the other side and that's where I'm going to place one of my snaps. And then if I just go and poke the awl through the fabric here, that's going to give me the position of the snap for the other side. And I just mark that right there. Open the fabric out. Grab the snaps that you're going to be using. Now I've made a mark here and I've made a mark here. Rather than having to put the cutlery into each pouch, the easiest way if you're making multiples is to lay this over the top of the other one, poke a hole through with the awl, and do the same for the other one. And then you've transferred the marking onto the other piece. Whilst I'm sewing lots of these up, I'm going to leave one of these without any snaps on it. I've just got the hole markings, and then I can go and place this over the top of the rest of them. And I can even place a few layers on top of each other as I go. So I'll set that one aside and put snaps on later because I'm going to be making more. Place the cap onto the outside fabric and grab one of your little doodads. Clamp that together and we'll place a cap coming from the inside of the pouch through to the other side. Grab the other doodad, <laughs> place that on top and we can clamp that together as well. And we're done. Pop your cutlery back in there and roll it up. Well, how's that for a productive morning? Once I'd finished the first two, I whipped up a few more of these. They didn't take any time at all. With your cutlery inside, all you need to do is roll it up and snap it together. If you want to have this as a tighter roll, you can reposition one of your snaps, maybe put this one down a little bit further and you can tighten it up a little bit. But that's up to you. Didn't I promise these would be quick and easy? Just this morning I've made eight of these little cutlery roll-up pouches already Hopefully I'll find some time this week to make up a batch that are going to be suitable for men, women and children as well. These are going to be perfect for school camps, uh, picnics and Chris and I can take these on our holiday with us in a couple of weeks as well. So I think these are going to be very useful. I put the clock on and I managed to make six of these in an hour. That included me using a regular iron rather than the heat press. I wanted to have a more realistic time for you and I also pressed in between stages as well just to keep it nice and neat. So six of them in an hour that works out to be 10 minutes per pouch and at my hourly rate $45 an hour which works out 75 cents a minute. Um, it's $7.50 for my labour in my mind I'd already decided I wanted to try and sell these for $10 because they are only small $10 each or to entice people to purchase more I'd make it three for 25 cost of material which comes to about three dollars and my seven dollars fifty in labor uh, of course my labor costs are really high because that includes all of my overheads and a wage for myself as well so these will be in the shop I haven't put labels on them I just don't want to put labels on these ones I think they'll sell without them so hopefully this week I will get cracking sometime make up a bigger batch and then I can put them in the shop and hopefully they'll start selling for Christmas because these will make a great Christmas stocking stuffer as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.